Good morning, everyone. Sorry, it's, it's too loud. <laughs> there we go. Um, yeah, I wanted to greet you and welcome you. Welcome to every single one of you. Um, it's so nice. Some of the faces I don't, I don't even recognize yet, but you're all welcome and part of the family. That's all, all for sure. And I wanted to just share the song that we're going to sing now, and the prelude is might be new to many of you. Some, some know it or already. Did, the, did you feel the mountain tremble? So as a worship team, we're just going to introduce it with a shorter version of it, and then we'll sing it later. to unpack my file here so that I can get the announcements. Right. We have a wonderful watchword over the service today. The whole theme of today is joy. Something that we all sorely need. Joy. But our joy comes through our Lord. And so the watchword is quite appropriate. It's from 1 John 5 verse 4. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. A lot of the things that steal our joy are the worries around us, but our Lord has overcome it. He has won the victory, and therefore we are a people of hope. And that's what we want to celebrate today. I'd like to share a few announcements with you. So the thank offering last Sunday for our congregation amounted to 7,128. And today the collection is for the ministry and discipleship um, fund of our church. And I sent a video out to the congregation and friends. I hope that some of you saw it. But the, it's a part of our a team of our church that supports um, projects and initiatives that really help with HIV, clinics, early childhood development and more. And that's where today's money is going. Everything that we're giving today in our thank offering is going towards these projects. That's later. Have a look at the services that are coming. They're, if you're interested, they're on the announcements. I'm not going to go through them. Um, we congratulate Nie Wittig on her birthday today and Elke Wellman. Um, have a look at the events that are coming up. There'll be Alpha Course, TikTok Moms, the Toddlers Group. Um, Pastor Lutke will be away from the 5th of October until the 7th for the wedding of our, one of our church's interns, Hermann Duvel. And on the 7th of October is the wedding of Egon Wichmann and his fiancée, Jamie. Please keep them all in your prayers. 
And before we start with the psalm prayer, I'd like to ask Stefan to share something with you as well. I don't know how many of you have been made aware, but um, this year we have our church synod happening, which is actually happening now on the 19th to the 2nd, 2nd of October. Um, it's the first sitting of the 8th synod. Um, we break, it's broken up into three sittings per synod period. So this is our first one. The theme for this one is hope, live in it. My one request is that you please keep the synod in your prayers. Um, there's a lot of uh, work that has happened already. But um, <coughs> this one, we've got a lot of voting for the deans. The bishop has already done, as you probably have, uh, I probably don't know if you, any of you have met him yet, uh, uh, Dean Tio Yekel. Bishop. Oh, the bishop, sorry. <laughs> he was dean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, but please keep this in your prayers. Um, especially as we all travel up to um, <coughs> Augsburg, I think it is, if my memory serves me correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, the roads out there are not uh, 100%. Uh, yeah, uh, that's just mainly what I want to ask you to do, is just please keep this in prayer. Uh, it's, a, it's our main decision-making body of the church. If any of you would like um, any information, all the documentation is public. I think there's only been one sitting where we had a, a closed document in all the period that I know of that I've been involved with Synod. But all the documentation is public. If you're interested, please speak to um, Elizabeth uh, Rommelsbacher, Andrew B., myself, or Pastor Udo. And we can get, get you the documentation if you're interested in reading any of this, what goes on at Synod. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, so one of the tenets of our church is that we believe that not one person has all the answers. Uh, we've all been called to be priest, prophet, and king together. And I think that's how we, we find God's will better together. And that's where the synod comes in. Synod is on the road. Sin together and odos is road. So exodos means out on the road, exodus. So that's why the synod is so important. Come together and find God's will together. Um, that's what that's all about. And last announcement is Village Vibes. Don't forget about that. On the 27th of October, um, we're going to have a lovely evening. It's a Friday. It'll be right here next door at what was the, the Hof. I don't know if they're changing the name or anything. But the 27th of October, Village Vibes. It's going to be a lot of fun. And everybody is invited to come. Right. I want to start this our time of, of reflection and prayer now with Psalm 138. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name. And your word. When I called, you answered me. When you, you made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is on high, he looks down. He looks upon the lowly, but the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out my hand. Stretch out your hand against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we can be here in your midst. We ask that you help us to experience joy today. Everybody's here from with different burdens and, and crosses to bear. Everybody had a different week. You know what each one has been through. Thank you that you are so amazing, that you know that, and that you know each one here by name, that you have made them on purpose, fearfully and wonderfully, and that you love each one of us. 
And so we come to you in your presence. We yearn for you. We long for you. In Jesus' name we pray all this. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing with us. Um, we start with some golden oldies.
Heavenly Father, we worship you because you are amazing. You are so patient with us, more than we ever deserve. You should have turned your back on us so many times. And yet you give of your love. You still are faithful to us. And we love you. We love you, Lord, for everything that you are. We love you and we thank you for every blessing that you have given us. We love you and we say thank you for every brother and sister here in this room, in this sanctuary with us. We thank you for the families that you've given us. We thank you for every special moment and every memory that we have. We thank you for the heat and the cold and the rain and the clouds and the sunshine because through it all you are there and we are blessed through your abundance. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. I'm going to ask all the children. Also a source of joy. Most times. I do bite. <laughs> right, let's, let's pray. Are you ready for children's church? Yes, let's pray together. They are scared of me today. I don't know why. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for these children. Thank you for the blessing that they are. Thank you that you have given them to these families and all the children in our lives. We ask that you bless them with the same blessing we have through your spirit and your word as they continue their service in Children's Church. Amen. Right, enjoy. I want to ask you to stand again, up, down, up, down. Yes, um, we're going to sing another song before we hear the readings. This is the song that we sang in the beginning. And for those of you who know it, Belt it with all your heart, and as you get to know it, sing along.
Yes, Lord, our hearts dance with joy for you, despite everything, because we know that you are our rock and our foundation and our hope. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The epistle reading for today is found in Romans 10, um, verses 9 to 18. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God's, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on, on him who, in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed what he has heard from us? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. The gospel reading is found in Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28, the faith of the Canaanite woman. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying. Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the reading. Thank you so much for sharing that word of God with us. I invite us all to stand as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. And as we proclaim this, it's a declaration that Jesus is the Lord and he is the conqueror. Let us stand and share and confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the realm of the dead. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. you got to stay standing for this next song. It might remind you of Christmas, but the words are different.
starts with a bang and ends with a bang. And at the point, I think there's the point behind it, you feel like you should just carry on. And it should have an ending, but no, the joy has to continue. And that's uh, a song, the melody was composed by Beethoven. Not the dog in the, sh in the movies from our childhood, but the composer. But I wanted to ask you to bow your heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you open our hearts to your word today. Holy Spirit, help us to hear. Change our hearts, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the theme today is joy, 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 you know, with a Christmas melody. I'm sure there's some shops already with Christmas decoration. Have you seen any yet? So I'm sure. As a child, Christmas is a joyful time because you get presents. For the, for the adults, it's a stressful time. You know, I suddenly have to find money to buy these children presents so they're not disappointed and so on. But I have a serious question actually to ask you. Do you experience joy? Do you experience joy? When was the last time you got up in the morning and felt this deep rejoicing because of a beautiful spring day? Or perhaps let out a sigh of contentment? When was the last time you thought to yourself, I love my life? Have you ever thought that? When was the last time, or let me ask this again, do you experience joy? Hmm. If your answer is no, well, you're not alone. But I have to ask you the next question. Why not? Why don't you experience joy if that's you? Why not? There are a million possible reasons, but for you the question remains, why not? The Bible tells us in Galatians 5 that joy is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. But for the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Lord, where is my joy? This is a question that I've had in my heart in the last years because I think God was trying to teach me to have joy. Um, I'm grateful for my upbringing. I had some stresses that children have when you move a few times or you lose a grandpa or grandma and through the course of life and from time to time I would, have, I would pick up on my parents' worries and stresses that all parents have. Yet on the whole I remember enjoying my childhood. I don't know about if you rem reminisce about your childhood when you were small and you went out and played. Um, I hope that you also had memories of joy. I remember this feeling of, ooh, Saturday morning, there's no school, and you've got the whole day ahead of you, and you can do, you can play, and I, I could go play with the dog outside or with my sisters, or I could go climb a tree or climb onto the roof when my parents weren't looking, or build a tree house without their permission, um, or just explore and crawl down artvark holes, which probably wasn't safe, but Man, I remember that feeling as a kid, just joy. Looking forward to the holidays. It was the best feeling. When the Christmas holidays start, you've got six weeks. You're very disappointed if it was five and a half, but six weeks of holidays. Do you remember that feeling? Do you still have it? Is <laughs> it some of you are nodding yes, yes? <laughs> you, know th you know why? Because that's because we never grow up, do we? <laughs> well, I became a teenager and much later an adult, probably last year. I think somewhere or other, sometimes joy slips away. It can, sometimes. 
I think you know what I'm talking about. I think you've all been through times where there's a season where it's just filled with other things. But you don't give joy much thought because it just kind of slips away. Perhaps it's a time of grief. Uh, perhaps it's a time of uh, just filling your life with day with chores and duty and work and, and shopping and taking care of kids or, or mom and dad or whatever the case might be. And as we get older, we do things that we're not proud of. And then guilt starts to fill in that space. Or anger for the things that we've experienced and we don't want to let go. Or <coughs> loneliness. And in South Africa, when we look around us, we, we sometimes tend to be very negative people. It's true. I mean, there are things that are falling apart in South Africa, but sometimes we get into this attitude, this mode of being negative about life. <coughs> and sometimes we even get into a place where we feel that everything is against us. I'm sure you know people like that. When you've just gone through hard times, sometimes you get people that just are filled with resentment or anger. There's no joy. Why always me, Lord? Why do these things always happen to me? Sometimes these people can also get de defensive quickly. It's very difficult to talk to them. But there's a whole range of it. And along somewhere, somewhere you find yourself do you experience joy? I want to read, well, what I've had on my heart in the last years is something that God is trying to, has been trying to teach me. I've been learning very slowly. It's something that Peter realized when the rooster crowed and Jesus looked at him. It's something that King Saul <clears throat> never learned to do. And it's something that King David had to do after the prophet Nathan confronted him about his affair. And what I'm talking about is accountability. Taking ownership of your own life, your own decisions, your own uh, experiences, your own heart, your own mistakes. Taking accountability for them. This, is, this was me. No one else. I want to read from Psalm 51. So it says in the, in the introduction to the psalm for the directive music, a psalm of David when the prophet Nathan, sorry, this is creaking, I'm going to move over here. A psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. These were his words. Have mercy on me, God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, yet you desired faithfulness. Even in the womb, you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, do not cast me from your presence, nor take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. What an amazing psalm this actually is. David's accountability was that he had to, well, his version of this taking accountability was having to Come to terms with what he'd done and to confess it. So we know the story. Well, perhaps if you don't, King David had enough wives, but one day he was standing on the top of his palace and he saw another man's 
wife bathing, and he wanted her. And he arranged for her to come. And they had an affair. I don't know how much say she had in the matter. It doesn't say. Um, and he, he, then he tries to sort of cover up his tracks. He doesn't take accountability for what he did. He calls for her husband, Uriah, to come back from the battle line. And he hopes that he will go home and, and sleep with his wife so that he thinks it's his child. But he doesn't. Because his brothers are in war, he sleeps by the gate. And eventually, David even tries to get him drunk to do it. No, he wouldn't. And then David realizes, okay, it's not going to work. So he has the commander of his army take Uriah and place him right by the wall of an enemy city and he is, because he will be killed there, and he is killed. He has her husband killed. And then he tries to hide it, so much so that God... It doesn't really mention it too much in the Bible, but we know that he tried to just hide it and ignore it and not take accountability because he, God has to send Nathan the prophet to him. And Nathan says to him, there is a man who has a hundred sheep, but when a guest comes, he takes the one sheep or lamb from a poor man's house and slaughters him. And, and David is quick to judge. He gets up and this man is worthy of death. And then Nathan says, you are that man. You did this. And that's when he realized, Yo. I love how he was very quick to judge another one. But when it came to himself, I'm going to turn a blind eye. I'm not, I'm not going to hold myself accountable. To David's credit, as king, he could have had Nathan killed. He could have intimidated everyone to just keep quiet. He actually takes accountability for what he's done. And he confesses his sin. And he writes a song to be sung publicly. And everyone hears and knows. I mean, they probably all know about it, knew about it anyways. But he, a king, publicly humbles himself and asks God for forgiveness. And in his words, you can hear that his bones were crushed. He was, over, he was feeling guilty that whole time. And he felt far away from God. And his heart had lost its joy. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. That's David's story. My story is that I reacted to life. And then was unhappy that things weren't happening. The things that I wanted to achieve weren't being achieved or whatever. I wasn't taking accountability for my life. That actually, God has given me a brain and a heart goals and, and hopes and dreams, and I've just let things happen hoping that they would, instead of really taking the bull by the horns and saying, look, this is, this is important. And it also counts for joy. You are not a victim of life. You are a gift, and life is a gift and it starts with a decision that I need to take accountability for my life. For the things that I've done, it's not anybody else's fault. My anger is not someone else's fault. Yes, I was hurt, but I'm the one keeping it. For whatever reason, I don't know. I, I feel guilty for the things that I've done because I don't want to take accountability for it and confess it and accept God's forgiveness. We let ourselves off the hook too quickly. And it also counts with joy. Did you know that one of the gifts of the, or the fruit of the Spirit is joy? God wants you to have joy. You are allowed to be, experience joy. So what's keeping you from it? Remember what David said, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. The joy that I'm talking about is not the joy maybe as a child that goes and sees all the presents under a tree. That's, that's lovely. I mean, it is joyful. It's rejoicing. But that's not the joy, the deep-seated contentment and joy that I'm talking about, that we yearn for. The joy that comes when you, when you know that God is your Father, that you are forgiven, that you are, there's peace between you and your God. 
And there's nothing between you. And you have done everything in your power to confess and to forgive and all of that. But it, and your joy of salvation comes when your relationship with God is right. And the truth is, you can't make it right. He made it right. And it boils down to trusting. But even there, we let ourselves off the hook. Don't take accountability for our faith, for our doubts. We muddle through life. And soon you know that, okay, you're 40, 50, 60, 70, and you realize, hang on, I've missed out. And I've not enjoyed life. Why? That's the question you need to ask yourself. God freed you for joy. What is it that you need to take accountability for today? What have people been trying to tell you that's made you defensive or angry? There's, a, there's something you need to take accountability for. Where have you tried to take the reins in your own life instead of letting God lead you? Where have you let despair and negative uh, things around you become everything you see when it's not? There's always blessing and positivity and things around you. And our Lord is always bigger than every obstacle. And He has paid for every single sin in your life. Everything. There's no reason to hold on to anything. Because He knows who you are. And He loves you. And He took your sin and everything about you on the cross. So why not accept that? Be open about who you are and what you've done. And then just grab a hold of God's promises. That when you forgive, you're truly forgiven. And you don't have to feel guilty. Why not obey Him, forgive, let go? You are allowed to feel joy. I thought, I was wondering what message would I like to share for the last sermon. And I thought, this is it. There's so many messages about obedience and all of this. But my hope for all of you is that your joy may increase. Joy, even in the midst of chaos and things happening all around you. Joy in the morning when you get up and you hear the birds. When the sun is shining, all the rain is falling. Joy, even though you might have a million things on your to-do list. Joy in the little things in a cup of coffee. Joy in your children or your family. Joy in each other. Um, especially when we don't grow up. Eh? Just joy. That's my prayer for you. And it starts with taking accountability for yourself. Your choices, your life, your faith, your doubt, your emotions. They are yours. And no one else is making you do things. That's you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that you grant us courage to take accountability for our life. To not let life just happen to us or to feel anger and hurt for things that have happened and to hold on to them and feel that we're stuck in them because we're not. Help us to take accountability for the words that we've said and, and everything that we are and have done. But also let us take account, to take hold of what you have done for us because that is the truth. In you we are forgiven. In you we are accepted and adopted as your children. In you we are loved. You have made us fearfully and wonderfully and we are yours and we will rejoice and be glad because Lord you are our rock and our foundation through everything. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right. I think, let's stand if you have the energy for this next song, God My Rock. Um, when my heart is overwhelmed, I'll look to you alone, God My Rock. And it's in this rock that God is that we find our joy to get through anything.
Let us pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for who you are and everything that you've done. Thank you that we know that we can come to you and that you hear our prayers. Lord, our hearts pray for this country. We pray for our politicians. We pray that you bless them. Bless them so that they may turn to you in every way. Bless them so that all those who are stealing or not doing their jobs, Lord Jesus, turn away and turn to you and live for service. We pray that you bless your church, bless your leaders, bless your children, bless them through the outpouring of your Holy Spirit and bless them with deep joy. May we be a light on this hill. Lord, in South Africa, we need joy. And so, Heavenly Father, help us to be a people that see the good as well as the bad, that rejoice in your salvation, that cling to and protect the peace that we have with you. Lord, Heavenly Father, we pray for our loved ones, both near and far. You know the ones that we have in our hearts. Some of them are sick. Some of them are alone. Some of them are in despair. Some of them are trying to find jobs. Some of them have their own families. And for some, life is good. Whatever their circumstance, Lord Jesus, you see the people that we have in our hearts, and we ask that you bless them and protect them, uplift them and encourage them, and draw them near to you. Lord Heavenly Father, I pray for every single one of these brothers and sisters of mine, that you fill them with deep joy. That you set them free from everything that binds them, that steals their peace and joy. That we may be a people who rejoice. We pray together with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you with joy. The Lord bless you with an unwavering faith. The Lord bless you as His people and keep you in His path. May the Lord bless encourage you and strengthen your faith and your love for one another. May the Lord bless you with the spirit, with strength and mercy. The Lord blesses you, God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. song. I would just take this opportunity to say, Rolf, thank you very much for your, your years of service here. <clears throat> We're going to miss these sermons of yours. They, we all know how they come from the heart. And uh, we wish you all the best for your future. And I know yesterday was your official last day, but again, thank you for today. And uh, we hope that everything comes right soon with your visa. And uh, I'm sure that your, your joy now is to go back to your family and to be with your family for a while. And we wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to miss everyone. <laughs>